Hi everyone, we're going straight into this. Whatever the case, she didn't seem to have noticed I was there. Even so, I had to admire how unapologetically she she was walking along. Wow. Because I'd also undergone the humiliation of going around with a D-sword in hand. The only difference is I don't think people can see this one. Wasn't she mortified to be carrying such a huge sword? Well, the police must have taken in her in for questioning at least once. No doubt about it. As I continued in the train of thought, Tina's form steadily went into the distance. Where did she sell a badass D-sword like the one she had? Personally, I wasn't that satisfied with the one I'd acquired, which didn't have a cool shape or radiate light. Sinna's sword, in comparison, demonstrated fascinatingly good design sense. I got my hands on the D-sword in hopes of using it in some kind of protective charm. At the time, trembling in fear, I, I saw the means of supporting for my heart. Of support for my heart, rather. I was a little more stable now, after the stuff with Remy, but despite that, the situation surrounding me hadn't undergone much, much improvement, ya. Yeah. <laughs> I still had many enemies, like Shogun and Yua. I don't think Shogun registers as an enemy, trust me. He seems like a nice dude. It was precisely because of this that I possessed a desire to obtain a much stronger looking D-sword. Of course, it was also due in my part to my collector's mentality as an otaku, but... <clears throat> Drawn along by the sight of Sina's D-sword, I floated all the way over to the pedestrian scramble before I realized what I was doing. Crap, I thought, biting my lip. I hadn't wanted to come to the plaza. I reluctantly went to the shopping district and school because I had to, I had things to accomplish there, but in so far as it was possible, I wanted to avoid going near them. What? When there were tons of people, I didn't know how standing around me like this... What? I can't read, come on! When there were tons of people I didn't know standing around me like this, it gave me the hallucination that all my escape routes had been stolen, and it became hard for me to keep breathing. As expected, the station's plaza was full of people today as well. Feeling sicker and sicker, I hunched over for a little while, holding my nausea. Because of that, the next time I raised my face, I'd lost sight of that eye-catching D-sword. It looked as though she'd walked in the direction of the Hachiko statue, but... Right then, the lights of the scrambled crossing turned green. Hello, aren't you a cutie pie? Anyways, a huge number of people rushed into the, sh into the crossing in all directions. It became a little chaotic. I thought it was kind of amazing that all these people could go in whichever direction they wanted without bumping into each other. Seeing this, I became well aware of how unrealistic my delusion of the impotent pedestrian scramble had been, the one from two days ago. It might be the case that, over the course of a whole year, there wasn't one second of time where this place became vacant. Besides, what had I intended to accomplish were chasing after Sam. I couldn't do so much as ask a manga that I could clerk about whether a product was in stock, much less start up a conversation with this unsociably and scary looking Senna. Besides, she might be my enemy. If you are not with me, then you are my enemy! <laughs> um, I had no idea what could ha end up happening to me if I merrily trailed after someone like her, defenseless. What was wrong with me? I better go back. When having come to that decision, I started to turn on my heel. What? I noticed a white chain laying on the pavement. Plus, though people's legs were concealed the place it led to, it seemed to extend from almost exactly where I was standing to the opposite side of the pedestrian scramble. Someone has very white feet. 
What could it be? What could this be? It was a remarkably long long chain. Was it being used in some sort of construction? But I couldn't detect any other traces of construction work. I didn't think they'd just leave this one chain laying around. A prop from a location shoot from for a movie or a TV drama? And, uh, they couldn't use it for that at a time when there were so many people here. True. If so, had someone thrown it away? A chain that is so long? It'd be hard enough simply to bring it over here. I doubt it. Whatever the answer, I was definitely going to impede the progress of cars and pedestrians. It was, rather. I craned my neck to see how those around me were reacting. I thought it'd be dangerous if someone happened to trip over it, but I didn't see a single person paying the slight, slightest attention to it. <coughs> Maybe my eyes were playing a trick on me, I figured, so I rubbed them before squinting at it anew. But Jane was lying there, as I thought before. Also, it was too eerie for me to work up the courage and touch it. Rather than being cheapest looking and made from plastic, it was a very sturdy looking metal type. I wondered how long it had been left alone there. <gasps> oh shit. This panning really fucking kills me every time. Things were the same as usual. I would have thought of this as being some form of trap. A tra trap! I would have fled in fear at the thought, maybe. At the end of the chain, something horrifying was laid in, laying in wait for me. But for some reason, my current self was helplessly interested where this chain led and what it connected to. My heart was controlled by a mysterious illusion that I needed to trace my way along it. Jostling away against pass passerby again and again, I crossed the pedestrian scramble before the signal turned red. The chain continued toward an old, deep green streetcar that had been set a little to the side of the Hachiko statue. I called it a streetcar, but it was because uh, but because its wheels had been removed, it was actually closer to it being kind of a monument or exhibition. It should be possible to freely enter it. As I'd guessed, the white chain went up to the streetcar's open door and extended inside its compartment. There were many people waiting around by Hachiko, but not one of them paid any heed to the chain. They didn't show the faintest indication of noticing it. Besides, I didn't sense anyone's presence inside the streetcar. I swallowed anxiously and took a peek inside. <laughs> hey -o! What's up? that instance, I came to an understanding that this had been a trap. A tra trap? We brought all power to the main entrance. I couldn't believe myself for not having felt the least bit of doubt until now. Ah, curiosity killed the taku. There was a single figure within the empty seeming compartment. I always sat outside a cross leg on one of the streetcar's wine colored seats. Seats. Seems more like burgundy to me. What the fuck is that? Dude. Every time I play this game, I get like really. Ugh. Ugh, man. I get like really. I even forgot the word. That's what happened. I scared myself shitless. I said it in a f in the last episode, and now I can't remember. Yippee! Her sharp gaze captured me. F captured me firmly. In her hand, she was holding a popsicle. The blue popsicle was crunchy, kun wasn't it? Ah, uh, it's something really popular in Japan. We used to have them too. No, Crunchkin didn't matter in the slightest right now. More importantly, I found it strange that I couldn't spot her giant dessert anywhere. Where had she managed to stow, to stow away something so big? 
Quest of a sword, the white chain lay curled at her feet. Oh, this is going to be great. And to think of it, when I last met her in the shopping district, she said I'll be I'll be in the street court near the station. So this is where she'd meant. She was the one who left the chain there. Had she really walked up holding such an incredibly long chain? It looked like it could weigh well over 10 kilograms. Lengthwise, it must have surpassed... Hello, can I... Love articulate pro enunciate thank you it looked like it could weigh well over 10 kilograms lengthwise it must have surpassed 50 meters this girl was pretty hard to get a handle on she wasn't normal could she be shogun Frightened, I attempted to make a silent escape. A sharp voice came flying after me. Hide. I unthinkingly stopped in place. Oh great, here we go again. It's the shit making music. Frantic eyes. I made the gears in my head go round and round. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. Can't blame me. What would she do if I ran away from her? Would she chase after me, waving her D sword? I tried imagining it, and it fits so perfectly with my image of her that I hastily wiped that vision out from my brain. Conversely, what would happen if I simply obeyed her and went in? She would have a good impression of me. Maybe she wouldn't do anything rough to me. I know what this music reminds me of! Majora's Mask! Maybe there was even the possibility that she'd become in- that she'd becoming interested in selling her dessert to me? Huh? Doubt it. I didn't think she'd give it over. I didn't think she'd give it over quite that easily. But even so, I might be able to get her to tell me about a store where I could buy one. Besides, it seemed like she'd been waiting for me. I've been waiting for a girl like you to come into my life. Fuck now. <laughs> I can sing very good. Ugh. To put it another way, it meant that at the very least she'd some kind of interest in me. She looked intimidating, but it, but in much the same way as many Tinder characters. Perhaps she was actually a decent person on the inside. That seemed like an overly convenient train of thought. But she couldn't kill me yet. It's just out of the blue for going on inside. That at least was certain. Or so you think. Because this was smack dab in the middle of Shibuya. The statue of Hachiko was right in front of us. I mean the story did start off with us being stabbed by Rimi. With a D sword. There were lots of people all around us. It'd be downright suicidal of Senna to kill me in broad daylight. I took a deep breath, made up my mind, and stepped inside the streetcar. <laughs> I suddenly noticed the bundled up chain that had been piled at Senna's feet up until hardly a second ago had completely vanished. I figured she must have moved it somewhere, but I hadn't heard any noise, and Senna was still sitting down in the same place. For starters, where would she be able to move it? I didn't spot the chain anywhere in the compartment. What? I don't know about an error. Utterly disregarding my confusion, Sina asked me another incomprehensible question. When I shook my, when I shook my head. I 
baffled, Senna's expression became even harsher. At last, averting her eyes from me, she let out a small sigh and bit into her popsicle. Released from her gaze, which had given me the impression that she just might be capable of murder, I felt like I was about to flop down in place. If possible, I would preferred, preferred to sit in one of the seats, but when I thought about whether she might pick a bone with me if I did, I found myself unable to act on what I wanted. I don't know. Senna cast a brief look at me before jerking her chin at the view beyond the window. People? Outside the window? People. Tons of people. I had the sense that they multiplied compared to before. Merely looking at them made my head threaten to start aching. People hunched over, fiddling with their cell phones. People wearing smiles as if they talked on the phone. What? As they talked on the phone. People gazing blankly at the flow of the crowd, and I just got something on Steam. So, I actually got Dota 2. God damn it. Oh well, I'll accept it. Thank you! And to my game library. Yay! No, I won't play it now. I'm recording. Well, thank you, Tim. Oh, shit. And I actually moved my chaos head a bit. So I'm going to reboot it. And I'll see you guys later.